Hello and welcome to this Profit Protector Pro video. Today I thought it'd be a great idea to go over the top five most frequently asked questions when it comes to this software. So a wonderful 24 seven support team who are on it all the time get asked all manner of questions. And so I just thought it'd be really cool to share some of those with you, especially if you have the same questions on your mind, hopefully it answers them for you. So without any further ado, the first one, what is a repricer? Now, this might seem like a, a real alien term for you if you haven't come across a repricer before, but basically a repricer, so when you sell on Amazon and you have an item, you'll set a minimum and a maximum price for the item. So it's got parameters to reprice between um, to help you get the buy box. With a repricer like Profit Protector Pro, the real crowning jewel with this is you can do exactly the same. So you would set a minimum and a maximum price on an item. But what gives you such a massive upper hand is the fact that you can set a, a repricing strategy. So what this is, it determines how the software reprices the item. So it's looking for ways to win you the buy box. It's looking for ways to help you uh, make the sale. It's looking for ways to help you make more profit. Now within Profit Protector Pro, there's lots of different types of strategies. There are algorithmic strategies which have got AI learning. Okay, so they learn on the job, they adapt to situations. Uh, some of them are more sales focused. Some of them are more profit focused. Some of them are somewhere in the middle. You just set the appropriate one depending on the type of situation that you are in and what exactly you want to do with your item and how you want it to be repriced. Some of these strategies are rule based. So they do exactly what they say on the tin. For example, one of the strategies would be match the buy box price. And it's going to do exactly that. And it will just keep doing that. There's also uh, strategies that are focused on merchant fulfilled sellers. So if that is you, then you'd use them. And it will also focus on the FBM competition a whole lot more. If you are selling used goods or books, that is a strategy made just for you, just for those types of items as well and you can even create your own strategies from scratch as well there's a whole lot more as well to profit protector pro but i definitely recommend checking it out if that already does sound of interest but in a nutshell that is what a repricer is next question how long does ppp take to sync you can also find the answers to some of these questions in the frequently asked questions page of profit protector pro and that question is here as well so basically, when you link up Profit Protector Pro through to your Amazon account, so you'd head into the Amazon settings of Profit Protector Pro, and then you would link it up like this. There are instructions on this page as well to help you do that for the UK and EU, and then also for the US, Canada, Mexico, those marketplaces, depending where you're selling. Um, so once you link it up for the very first time, it can take anywhere from a couple of hours up till 24 hours maximum. We would hope that it would happen within the first couple of hours, but it is possible for it to take up to 24 and it all depends on the size of your inventory and also the frequency of the data reports as well that Amazon sent through to Profit Protect Pro to allow it to sync. Um, if you do find you are having any issues with this at all, it could be that the credentials entered in to Profit Protect Pro to link that to your Amazon account are incorrect. So it might be a case of uh, re-entering those in again. Um, and if you were experiencing any other issues, then please feel free to reach out to the support team at info at profitprotectorpro.com. The next question is, will PPP reprice beyond my set minimum and maximum prices? The answer is no. It is programmed not to do that. So you'd set a minimum price and a maximum price and it will stay between those two. If it ever does feel the need to go below your minimum price or maybe even above your maximum price, it won't. But if you check your repricing history, it will say that it does want to go below your minimum, but because it can't, it's just sitting at your minimum price. So you will see those calculation decisions and what it says when you check the repricing history for your items in the inventory. So I'll tell you that. And then, of course, you're welcome to change your minimum and max 
maximum prices anytime you like within your inventory um, and it will it won't affect repricing in any way it will just continue to reprice but it'll have brand new parameters if you do change them at any time uh, so the answer is no it won't reprice beyond your set minimum and maximum prices there can be the rare occasion when you might see something like that happen but that won't be the case um, the rare occasion that I'm talking about is if Amazon perhaps have a sale on that item but don't worry if it does sell below your minimum price for example Amazon will compensate you the difference so it's nothing to worry about that is the only very very rare occasion when you might see something like that happen the next question is how do the strategies work so I did kind of cover this one before but let's look at it in a bit more detail so as I was saying on Profit Protector Pro, this is the strategies page as well. So if you head to this on Profit Protector Pro, you can read in detail about every single strategy. There's also other YouTube videos as well on this channel that run through them all in detail if you do need that as well. Um, but in a nutshell, as I was saying, you've got the AI strategies that are clever and they learn on the job. And as you can see there, it puts it nice and simply here for you. So you can see which ones are more sales focused and which ones are more profit focused with these explainer dots here. So you can see that these ones are a lot more sales focused. You've got these ones that are in the middle split fairly 50-50 and you've got ones that are more profit focused. Now, as a general rule of thumb, if you have a listing, if you have an item on a listing that has a lot of competition and lots of people have got their prices really close together you can see that it is really competitive you definitely want to set a more aggressive strategy that is more sales focused as it is a well it's a, exactly what it says there it's a lot more aggressive it's a lot more competitive so it will try to go just below the buy box in order to scoop it up and then once it has got the buy box, it will do its best to bump up the price as best as it can to find a sweet spot where it can maintain its hold over the buy box without losing it and getting you as much profit as it possibly can. You have the more profit focused strategies, which are good, perhaps on a quieter listing or one where you're happy to wait for it to get the buy box, as this one will often try to achieve your maximum price. And then you have the balance strategies, which give you the best of both worlds so they're just as sales focused as they are profit focused um it might be a good place to start if you aren't sure what strategy to set initially and then from here you can decide if you want to go a bit more aggressive or a bit more passive or maybe you just like how the balance strategy works as it is and maybe you'd leave it at that you've got the rule based strategies here so they do exactly what they would suggest in the title so match the low price uh match low fba price uh, and so forth you've got the use goods and books algorithmic strategy there so that is specifically for you if you are selling used goods or books then you've got the merchant fulfilled focus strategies here so as i was saying if you are an fbm seller you'd probably want to use these as it will focus a lot more on the merchant fulfilled competition you've also got the ability to create a custom strategy as well so you can create one from scratch it'll run you through a list of different scenarios and what you want Profit Protector Pro to do in those scenarios. So you just work your way through, answer the questions, and you'll have built yourself a strategy and you've made it exactly the way that you want it. And the final question is, how do I know if PPP is helping me make more money? So at the top of the inventory page in Profit Protector Pro, or indeed on the analysis page, you'll see here the 30-day PPP boost and the all-time PPP boost. Now, just to be clear, this is not how much profit you are making. This is additional profit that you have made uh, by PPP selling above the buy box price. So it is additional profit that Profit Protector Pro has helped you make. So without Profit Protector Pro, for example, you would have not have made this amount extra on top of the profit that you would have made otherwise. So in case that wasn't clear, there are tool tips here as well if you hover over them that help explain a little bit more so basically as i was saying you have made x amount more using profit protector pro than you likely would have without it additional profit ppp has generated by selling above the buy box price 
So the all time profit protector pro boost is exactly that. This is how much additional profit you've made for all time for as long as you've been using profit protector pro and the 30 day PPP boost is how much extra profit you have made in the last 30 days. Thanks to profit protector pro just to give you a bit of scale to see how it's helping you each month or in the last 30 days. Hopefully this video has really helped you. If you had one of those questions, hopefully it's answered it for you as well. If you do have any additional questions or need any further help, again, please feel free to reach out to the support team at info at profitprotectorpro.com. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.